I know you're gonna dig this. October 2017, another edition of Funk Chronicles on the One with G. <laughs> we have here another date in gym. <laughs> Sir, please give me your name and who you are in the funk industry. Uh, my name is Billy Jones, and I was a guitarist, vocalist with Heat Wave. I was doing all that stuff. Wow. Um, so tell me, give me a little history like I don't know. Well, first, were you born in Dayton, Ohio? I was born in Dayton, Ohio. Okay, Went so to we'll, school here in Dayton, Ohio. Right, so what we'll do is we'll, on the back end of this, we're going to go through these questions real quick. And on okay. the back end of this, we'll start bringing that little more personal thing. All right. Uh, but <clears throat> give me a little history as if I didn't know on the Dayton funk sound meaning, you know, the groups that came from here and et cetera. Oh my goodness, you want me to go way back. Way back from the very beginning. Well, let me, let me, let me start off, because I, I start off in a group with my brothers. And um, we originally started doing parties and stuff like that. And I used to just hang around just to help them out, set up equipment and stuff. And that group was called the Playmakers. And, and uh, let's see, it was my brother, Doug, he was a drummer. My brother, Pedro, he was a bass player. He had a cousin named Tony Baskin. And he was, um, he, was in the, he was one of the singers and stuff in the group. Anyway, long story short, we, they used to do parties. And uh, one day, we did a party, and they set up a tip jar for us. They set up a tip. They actually set up a tip jar. And at that time, um, we didn't really have a name, but we were just, just like a band. We called ourselves like the Playmakers or something mm -hmm, like that. We mm -hmm. just picked out a name. But anyway, they set up a tip jar. Next thing you know, that chip, tip jar got so full, we had over $50 in it. And we looked around and we said, we can get paid for this? What year was this? Oh, man, this was back in 19 and, um, I don't, do I early have to say? No, you don't do, was it early 70s? Well, yeah, it was well, early well, 70s. First off, folks, early 70s. first off, we, we know <laughs> you do not look your age. So let's just, well, thank you, know, you thank you. Folks that you don't know, yeah. again, uh, he doesn't look his age, and oh, we're not going to do that because obviously he doesn't want to talk about it. Oh, yeah. so it was, it was somewhere in the 70s, right? Early 70s, okay. early 70s, <laughs> early 70s. And then we found out we can get paid for it, and they were like, wow, we can get paid for this? So that's when we started doing it seriously. And then, um, you know, we went out and got some serious instruments, guitars and drums and stuff like that, and we took off from there. And then we, we, we formed a group that was called uh, Hearthorn Express that was like locally. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of local gigs around okay. here. So uh, how were you, I mean, because I think back in the day, we were, they used to have the, the bandwagons, right? And they went around oh, from park yeah, to park. Oh, yeah, yeah. It remember? was called the Soul Mobile back okay, in those right, days. Okay, right, the Soul Mobile, right? Yeah, so. we, they, they used to pull those up in, in the big parks around Dayton on the west side. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we were involved in that. It was I forgot that guy's name. I think his name was Big John or something like that. And he would always want us to come and, and you know, play on those things. And we, we did all the parks. Of course. That was I mean, fun. It was, what, we didn't get paid, but it was just fun. It was, it was fun. just exposure, yeah. you know. It was know? fun because it basically was like a battle of the bands on a portable, you know, stage. Yeah, battle yeah, of the I bands. Mean, and, and it plus it helped the community come together, yes. too. So yes. that, we, we was happy with that. Maybe we're trying to bring something like that back. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to think about mm -hmm. that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now tell me, you know, this funk sound, mm -hmm. uh, why do you think it's taken so long for us to celebrate our rich history in that, you know, we always say that Dayton, Ohio is the birthplace of funk. So why is it taking so long or are we just passive about our rich funk history? I don't think it's so much that um, it's taken so long. It's always been there, but with all the media that you have now, you have social media, you have, you know, internet and all that, all that's coming back. 
it, it's it's almost like full circle. But what it is is that it's always been there. It's just that with with the with the media now, you can see all the old videos. You can see all the old shows we used to do and stuff like that. That's, That's kind of and, and and all the you'd be surprised how many people you'd be surprised how many people will actually go back and dig up all those old records and put them on YouTube. That's me. That's me. <laughs> and put them on YouTube <laughs> and they'll play them and people are like, wow, that. That was some good stuff. Because, yeah. I mean, everything that we did back then has been sampled today. Oh, yeah, it's been I mean, sampled. It's just a done deal. Yeah, uh, and we didn't have that technology back no, we then. Did. So you had you to had play. play. You, you had, had to play. Well, well so I, I did have another question in mind. Okay. But now that we say that, did you learn how to play your instrument uh, or did you just pick it up by ear? I picked it up by ear. The way I really learned was that um, I watched my brothers and every time they put an instrument down, I would pick it up and start playing. Like my brother played the drums, I would pick the drums up and start playing. And then when it was time for them to go back and do their thing, and then I, somebody would put a guitar down, I would pick it up and play it. Somebody would put a keyboard down, I would pick it up and play it. It was just, that's how I learned. Now, Jones, are we talking about you're another Dayton multi-instrumentalist? Well, I play a couple of instruments. Play a couple, yes. Yeah, another play a couple. again, folks. If you don't know, the Dayton folks <laughs> like myself and. This man here, we're very modest, but I'm going to tell you guys right now, uh, this man can play everything <laughs> and play everything well. Okay, that's what I know. Oh, well, I, I tinker a little bit. Yeah, that's, okay, tinker yeah. a little bit. You better be glad <laughs> I didn't ask you to bring one of your accents so that we can show them. Oh, show my the folks goodness. what you oh, do. Yeah, don't worry. I'm going to interject you, some of your music. You're trying to give me dust the rust off now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, whatever. Uh, now, you just said something about social media. Mm -hmm. uh, do you use social media? I, I use it. I don't I don't use it personally, but if, if I had product to get out there, I would that would be the best media to get that out there fast. Yes, because you is. can you can actually do things in your bedroom or wherever you do it at wherever and just put it out there. And, and people will hear it, and if they the like world. it, you start getting yes, likes and hits and everything else. Yes, so once you put it up there, it's available to the world yeah. instantaneously. Instant. So, you know, I mean, that's run, great. You run across these amazing musicians from around the world yeah. who are copying, you know, what you guys created right. back in the day. Because yeah. certain parts of the world uh -huh. are just not getting acclimated to the funk sound. Yeah, they are. You know, so they're listening mm -hmm. to the stuff that you guys did in the late 70s and mm -hmm. early 80s, mm -hmm. and they're doing their twist on it. Yeah. And you know something that we attribute that we weren't able to do as a society in mm -hmm. the United States of America is because we took the arts yeah. or the A out of steam, yeah. and so we no longer have you know musicians that learned how to play their instrument, uh, you know, from a right. instructional yeah. standpoint. Yeah, that's kind of bad too because. When I when I came up, there was the arts. You know, you could do yes. drawing, not only drawing, yeah, no, but music kind of as well. Yes. And they they they, they basically drama. kind of phased all those yeah, programs they, out. Because of the money, they 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 cut the budget and found that, you know, when they did that, according mm -hmm. to a, a study that the president, you know, completed. Yeah. When they took the A out of steam. Yeah. And uh, what it did was it lowered test scores across the board by an average of seventeen percent. Wow. Okay. So that's the difference between a C and a B. Yeah, it is. Wow. And so now when you're talking about going to colleges, you know, the reason that the world is able to compete and come to our schools mm -hmm. and be accepted into schools is because they come with the grades. Yeah. You know, and unfortunately, you know, people thought that by taking music out, they would save money, but what it actually did was it actually hindered us as a society. Yeah. So now they're true. seeing that they've did it wrong, mm -hmm. and so now they're trying to correct it, or we <coughs> should never have allowed it, meaning yeah, mine and your yeah. generation. Yeah, yeah, we should sure. never have allowed that to take place. But yeah. that's another conversation yeah, for another, another conversation. day. We got we we have <laughs> heat wave in the house. Oh <laughs> gosh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, again, that sound was defining at the time and it's still used today. Mm -hmm. You know, you we can name every just about every artist has some kind of piece in my opinion, of the top songs anyway, mm -hmm. you know, you can hear some of those riffs that you guys were creating back in the day. Yeah. But like the Wright Brothers, people don't know that funk came from what we call the birthplace of funk, Dayton, Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Why do you think that is? I don't know. Some people think it's in the water. That's what Marshall <laughs> Jones said. Some people think it's in the water. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I just think it was the environment back then. It's just that... Um, if there was so many groups that kind of originated from Dayton, and, and then once one the group kind of rose up, yes, everybody else said, look, if they can do it, they live just around the corner from me. 
Right. We can do it too. And that's exactly. that's kind of the attitude that we took. And you know what we noticed too? You know, we got all those groups, Lakeside, Ohio yeah, Lakeside. Players, Zap, yeah, Heat yeah. Wave. What was so cool about them or you guys is that none of you sounded the same. Yeah. As soon as you hit, mm -hmm. you knew what the name of the group was by the way you sounded. There was yeah, no confusion yeah. that you sounded like someone else. But a lot of other people thought it was a lot of camaraderie about us. But it wasn't. We used called, to go and watch each other's concerts. Code. No, it wasn't a competition. Really? We used to go and watch each other's. We used to go and watch each other's concerts, and we would, I wouldn't say steal, but we would like borrow some things from what they would do, and then they would come and look at us, and they'd be like, ah, oh, I know where you got that from. Okay, and then they see something we do, and then they go off and do the same thing. Uh -oh. So okay, folks. But I tell you, it, it was a lot of groups. It was so many groups. So who would you steal were, from? <laughs> Man, I, I, I tell you, the list goes is this, on, on and on and yeah. on. Yeah. As far as guitar, one of our favorite like groups we used to like the like the Nick things from was Lakeside. They were oh my oh, gosh, yeah, well, those guys were yeah Stokes and mm. the Boys. Yeah, they were just they were just tight. The vocals was tight. The yes, music sir. was tight. And, yes, sir. Oh, they, I mean the horn section. Yeah, I mean. we used to we used to steal a lot of stuff from you guys. <laughs> 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 okay, you heard it here first. Yeah, Lakeside, they were, they were one of my favorites. Right? Okay, so now, you know, we're building a museum here in the city of Dayton. Oh, are you? Specifically geared towards funk music. Oh, okay. You know, you got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you've got the R&B Hall of Fame. We're going to create, and are creating, the Funk Hall of Fame. You ah. know, the Funk Music Hall of Fame and okay. Exhibition Center that we so lovingly call the Funk Center. So, so now, this is where it happened. Started no, it's happened. Where, this is where it originated, can, right? Where else should it be? Yeah. Could it be anywhere else? I don't think it could be. We, we had, at, like they said, at one time, on the top ten charts, mm -hmm. nine of the ten songs wow. in the top ten charts were from groups from Dayton, Ohio. Mm, you know, you know that, that did wow. We had to go research that, but Marshall Jones told us that in his interview. Wow. And so, you know, thank God for the internet. And we went back, and at one period, I, I should have remembered the dates, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. but this would have been like the early 80s. The wow. top ten song, the top t nine of the top ten songs, were from groups from Dayton, Ohio. I, I never mean, knew that. Zap, Lakeside, Heat Wave, mm -hmm. all of you guys had a song in the top ten at one period of time. I didn't know that. That's, that's yeah. That's that's interesting to know. In I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I, well, thanks I, for telling me that, yeah, man. Well, we're city of innovation. I yeah. mean, you know, the cash register. That's true. Yeah. Brakes, mm -hmm. air conditioning. You know, the list goes on and on. Yeah. Even the sticky stuff on the back of stamps was actually developed in Miamisburg. Right. Was it? The sticky stuff on the back Dang. of the stamp. The adhesive that goes on the towels on the space shuttle was created here in Dayton, Ohio. Didn't know but that. again, we're getting off topic because we're talking about <laughs> music. <laughs> but Dayton has such a rich history, and you yeah. know, we want to make sure that everyone knows that. Everybody knows it, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, That's there good. was a reason for that, and like Marshall Jones said, it could be because when God stepped into Miami Valley, He'd been walking around all day and the sweat off his feet ended up in the water and we get to drink the water and so now we become a, a place of innovation. I believe that. I believe that. So now, <laughs> going back to the Funk Center, um, after everything is said and done, right, mm -hmm. and people come to our facility, mm -hmm. what experience would you personally like to see them walk away with? I would like to see them walk away with a feeling of, one thing, pride, because this is, this is where it kind of all started. I think they will walk away with a lot more knowledge, you know, because a lot of people don't know that all that a lot of the funk groups originated they have no in idea. this area. They a lot of people know. didn't know that, so right. I think they go through go through that. And plus, just music history, period. Period. Just yeah, music. It's history, a whole period. genre in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. You know, just music history, period. It deserves to have its own place of yep. reverence and everything archived yeah. and. Yeah. displayed because uh, we're doing a bang up job and it's going to yeah, be so yeah. cool in there. I've seen some of the exhibitions. I thought that was pretty, yeah. some of the displays, I thought it was kind of neat. Yeah, and, and you know, funny. David is, he is such yes. a, you know, charismatic, wake up George, charismatic <laughs> guy that you know, I'm sure when he when he learned that he had an access to you, he hawked you down. Yeah, he and did. And he kept bugging yeah, he you did. and bugging even, you. Even you even just probably before. said, okay, I'll just do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess I'll just, you know, do this for the Funk Center. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but why do you think the Funk Center belongs in the city of Dayton, Ohio, then? I think because all the good music that came out of here, all of the groups that came out, you can name at least a dozen groups that has, that has hit the charge from yes, Dayton. Sir. Yes, sir. I mean, at least, at least a, dozen. a dozen. In the, in a short amount of time, mm -hmm. you know, and groups today are still sampling Zap or... You know, Sample and Zaps, from, uh, Slaves, Slave, Lakeside, Heat oh, Wave, yeah, all of those. Yeah, all of those yeah. songs, all of those songs. Mm -hmm. 
well, now that we've sort of, uh, we'll, we'll get off, not topic a little bit, but uh, David, who is the, you know, the producer, mm -hmm. uh, there's certain things that, you know, we were talking about before you get here. Right, you right. know, we want to make sure that we try and encompass everything and all the questions that we get as a organization mm -hmm. that we can pass along to the people. And, you know, uh, again, uh, I think you came in on the second iteration of the group Heat Wave? I came in on the second album, which was uh, Central Heating. Central Heating, so you were on the Central yeah. Heating album. Central Heating, yeah. How was it, or what was it like working with Rod Temperton? He was, he was an interesting character. A lot, of people, a lot of people, when they first meet him, they think he's really serious. But he, I'll tell you, he's a fun guy. He keeps everything loose when we're in the studio and stuff like that. But he was, um, he was, he, he, I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to put yeah. this because of the fact that a lot of people thought that he put down charts and all that stuff that he knew. But he didn't do that. A lot of times when we were, we would do an album or do a song or whatever, he, he'd come in, got this brilliant idea for a song. Got this brilliant <laughs> idea. He got all this going oh, on. So he gave you and he says, okay, reign. this, huh? You had free reign, with, so yeah, you actually yeah. were helping him create yeah, the yeah. sound, too. So he'd come in like, I got this brilliant idea for a song. And he'd come in and say, this part goes like this. And he would work with us one by one. The drum, he, he, he'll mouth out the drum beat. Wow. Or the bass player, he said, okay. I want this. He, he, Rob was an organist, he played keyboards. So he would play bits and pieces on the keyboard. This is where I want the bass to go, and this is where I want the guitar player mm -hmm. to go. But he'll give you the basic structure. Now, us as individual musicians, we can say, ah, that's nice, but it'll groove a little bit more if it did this. Wow. Or it'll sound better, that's you know, so the drummer cool. would say, it'll sound better right. if we play it this that way. Is so cool. And that's the way a lot, of, a lot of the stuff came together. And we would just rehearse it. And we would rehearse it, yes. and we would rehearse until it. it was, and and until it was. Until they say, okay, let's go. It's time to take it to the studio. Yeah, because, you know, one thing that we noticed about Rod's writing in that he wrote really beautiful and simple melodies mm -hmm. and put these nice chord structures around them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, again, it was innovative. I yeah, mean, yeah. you know, Heat Wave is another innovative sound. Before yeah, Heat right. Wave, there was no sound like that. Yeah, but you know what's interesting? He came from a rock back background. Right. That's I mean, uh, I mean, right. heavy duty hard rock background. Yeah. And then uh, when he hooked up with Johnny, it was like when them two got together, it was like he he was he was uh, he 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 really liked soul music and he mm -hmm. liked that and he wanted to get into that. And then when we got with Heat Wave, he just learned a whole different type of groove. And that's when he really started that's grooving. That's when he it was when he took off. I mean, yeah. you, you could hear it by the other artists that you know he was writing for. Yeah. And you know, when David said that you were coming on the show, uh, I you know started thinking back. I always go through my mind memory and, and remember. And we were a kid. And you remember when they first built the boys club over on Danner in Germantown? Ooh. Gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, when that facility first went up. Yeah, that was nice. You know, it was, yeah, wasn't it? Uh -huh. I mean, it was the only place that we could go, really, and do everything that you can do in a boys' club. Mm -hmm. We didn't have access to pools in my neighborhood because no. my school didn't have a pool. Right, right. Okay? And we didn't have no indoor basketball courts that we could go to, mm -hmm. you know, unless you snuck into the school at the hours. But, you know, that's <laughs> another story. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But one of my earliest memories of that club was hearing... Johnny and Keith in the bathroom mm -hmm. doing their harmonies. Okay. And, you know, one of the uh, reasons they say I, I have these real funny chord structures, they say. Mm -hmm. But that was, you know, I'd have to attribute it to, to that in that the way they did their harmonies were like haunting, mm -hmm. but beautiful at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And you know what, you know how the sound sounds in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they would go out there to the corner of Danner, Germantown, and, and continue singing when, you know, once the <laughs> facility closed down. But yeah, those are my earliest memories yeah, of, yeah, yeah. of Keith and Johnny. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have his wheelchair as part of, as one of the um, one of the displays? Uh, exhibits. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, right there in the Funk Center. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, as a matter of fact, the uh, Access Center for uh, gave it to us last year, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm, put on mm -hmm. display. So, oh. and uh, now, uh, so now that I see David has joined us. Um, Billy, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing all right, Dave. Good seeing you. Good seeing you. Good, good. One of the questions that I always want to know: How did um, you get involved with Heatwave? Did Johnny Wilder come and get you after? Eric John left, or how did how did that happen? Wow, wow, you take me way back. Yes, I do. Uh, the thing is, uh, Johnny was he was in the military over in Germany, mm -hmm. and every Christmas time he would come over to check our band out. Now, Graham was Hawthorne Express at the time, and Keith was Keith was in the band, and he'd come out and check us out, and he was like, "Man, I like the way you guys sound." He said, "I'm gonna come and you know 
I want you to join the band one of these days. And I said, well, man, I, I'm, I'm still in high school. I can't go. And every year he would come back. So he came back after I graduated from high school. He said, you ready to come play? I'm like, no, I'm getting ready to go to college. So he said, okay, no problem. So then one year he came back and he said um, he needed another singer. So that's when he got Keith. He came and got Keith. And I said, when Keith left, I was like, okay. All right, maybe something to this. He might be on to something. And then after I got out of college and, you know, uh, was working and things like that, he came back and asked me one more thing. He said, this going to be my last time asking you. He said, you ready to go yet? And then I said, okay, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll make a commitment to you. So, and then, um, but Eric Johns, he, at that time, Eric Johns was leaving the group because he, um, he just wanted to leave the group and he had some other things he wanted to do. And they gave me the opportunity to come in. That was back in 1976, 77, somewhere around in there. And uh, at the time, you know, when I, I never flew, never flew on an airplane, anything like that. So he, that, that was interesting. So when I got, I, I never flew on an airplane. So that was my first time ever flying. It terrified me to death because, you know, the, the oh my gosh, the ocean, the, the thunderstorm, the turbulence and everything. Right. But uh, after I got there, it was, it was really nice because of the fact that they had all the members of the group there and they just, they just took me in like I was one of the brothers, like I never did anything. Who did you migrate to when you first got to England with the group? Well, when I first got the, got the group, naturally Keith, because I knew him, mm -hmm. but then it was the other guy, uh, Roy Carter. He was my guy, so I, I mainly stayed with Roy when I got there, because the, the first day I got there, they said, okay, we're gonna hook you up with Rod. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna room with Rod. So. So I went with Rod, and Rod was a, he was, I'll tell you, he was a nice guy. The only thing I, he, he chain smoked. He smoked a lot, and I wasn't a smoker. And also, he would, he had these weird habits, man, that, you know, he would be sleeping, and the next thing you know, he'd wake up, and he'd look around, and he'd start playing on the piano, and I'm, be, I'm trying to sleep. Right. And I was like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I got this idea for a song. And uh, he would be tinkling and tinkling and tinkling, and I would say, oh, man, okay, I can't, I can't room with this guy. He's, he's up all night and blah, 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 blah. But little did I know, that was my, that was my introduction to the music business. Right. Because then my routine was go to work, go to rehearsals after work, right. and then go home. Right. His, it never stopped. They never stop. They say, man, you say that he used to, like you said, get up in the night, in the middle of the night, write stuff, with the papers and stuff. Oh, yeah. Laying around. Yeah. Hits, laying around. How was that? Did you, like, well, move that out the way? Did you do stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't do that because that was, that was his side of the room. Mm -hmm. But he would, uh, he, he would just get ideas and he would just write stuff down and he would write stuff down. And in those days, we'd, there wasn't any tape recorded and right, right. anything recorded. He would write a lot of stuff down mm -hmm. just so he can remember. The one thing I liked about Heat Wave, that was a stepping hoop. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, it was just, just, if I looked at some of the old uh, uh, Too Hot to Handle albums where Johnny and them was on his shoulders, mm -hmm. it was moving around, doing things like that. Yeah, we and had then, things like the Pyramid we yes, used to do. Yes, I, I, that was real. Yeah. Then, but one of the songs, y'all was on Soul Train, and y'all did a song, and, and when I was a young man, I used to see that, mm -hmm. I was like, wow, y'all actually playing and doing that? Yeah, we were playing Why? and singing. Yeah, we were playing and singing. A lot, a lot of people thought, that our show was so energetic, we were so live and doing stepping while we were playing. People thought that we were just miming, we didn't, we weren't playing our instruments. But at the time, we were like one of the, one of the first groups that had wireless instruments. So we would play mm -hmm. and, you know, with the wireless technology and things like that. And people were like, you guys aren't doing that. Like, Where's the tape at? We know you got a tape back there. But that was us playing. Oh, wow. It was us actually playing. Wow, wow. Yeah. What was um, one of your favorite songs when you played? Couple of, well, you name a couple of favorite songs that you love to play in Heatwave when you played. I think the ones I played was like that got the biggest reaction, like Always Forever. Mm -hmm. I love to play that and mm -hmm. and just hear the fan reaction. Mm -hmm. Boogie Nights was another one, Groove Line, mm -hmm. and Eyeball and and, uh, and Gangster the, the Groove, Groove, stuff yeah. like that. We used to do a lot of songs like that that get immediate. I, I, I like that because you know fans would react okay. straight away to it. Let's let's now a lot of people don't know this that um, Rod had so many songs to give to Heatwave first before they mm -hmm. gave anybody else. Tell us about that. Well, when he, when he wrote a song, we had first dibs on the, all of them. Okay. First dibs on it. And uh, he would bring a song and he would say, okay, look, I got a song, an idea, and he would rehearse it with us. Mm -hmm. And 
we would play it and then we record it in the studio and, it, and we would go over and say, well, we like this one, we don't like this one. Well, there was a lot of songs that we liked and, and Johnny had the last word on it. Johnny had the last word on it. Some people said, but after he got in the wheelchair, he couldn't breathe and sing like this. Yeah, yeah. So he had to do with the more simpler yeah. songs. Yeah, he, right? did, he had to, well, not necessarily, but he was still able to do the songs that he was done. It's okay. just that he wasn't, um, he couldn't put out the power like right, he used right. to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of those songs that uh, we had recorded and did, it turned out to be big hits for other people. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. I see, yeah, I see. I see. Big hits for other people. Wow. Now, see, and it was so interesting that I sit in the studio with Rod, whereas... Is the stuff that he uh, gave to other people sound like Heat Wave played that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's actually you mm -hmm. playing that, and he just took the tracks over there to them? Pretty much. He just had an idea for a song, but um, and when he took it over to him, he, I don't know if he played the same uh, demo tracks that we did, mm -hmm. but when he presented it to him, he presented the same way he would present it to us. Because I can see off the wall, that sounds just like Heat Wave, Johnny. That was one that we did. Rock With You, I know that was Heat That was Wave. another one that, yeah. that we didn't you know, do. So, and then you had a lot of stuff from Rufus, uh, yeah. You had some of the Brothers Johnson, yeah. Light Up the Night, you know, Light Up yeah. the Night, you know, that's those stuff. That he but what was so amazing about a couple of those songs was that some of the licks that we played, like uh -huh. the bass licks, the drum licks, guitar licks, keyboard licks that we, that the group played, yeah. same, they played the same way yeah, on, know, on because, those tracks. Because I was telling someone, that was good. that's Heat Wave, that's Heat Wave, mm -hmm. you, you know, because if you see, like Michael, the same harmony that Johnny sung on the backgrounds, mm -hmm. That, uh, that Michael Jackson did it, you know, mm -hmm. that, you know, all the songs that you, you mm -hmm. hear, and I was like, wow, that's, that's heat wave. Yeah, because most of that, most of that arrangement, most of that sound came from Rod writing, Johnny singing, mm -hmm. and, and when they arranged stuff, mm -hmm. and that's where most of that sound came from. Now, one of the songs I, I used to love, uh, we'll go back to the Central Heat Me album, mm -hmm. um, Keith did a song, Sin for the Sunshine. I thought that was... Send out for sunshine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Now, I talked to Johnny about that. Yeah, way I, back. I talked to way Johnny back. about that. Uh -huh. Johnny said, Rod and him said that was one of Keith's best songs that he sung. Yeah. And that just opened, that just opened up. He just sung that song. Yeah, he sung it. It was like one of those songs where I think he just felt it that day. He just felt it. And uh, he, he gave a pretty good vocal on that one. Now, do you ever see the group out now... Uh, I haven't I haven't seen the group out in a while. No, I haven't done that in a long time. I think last time I did a show with Heat Waves was probably about ten years ago. Oh wow! Every once in a while I go out. If they ask me to come out and do some things, then I'll go out. What's your exit choice, real quick? My what's your exit choice? What guitar do you like playing on the best? My guitar? Oh, I have a a Telecaster that I play. Okay, figures. It's a Telecaster that I play. I like playing that one. That's my favorite. David. Yeah. Now, now you know that we're building a museum. Yeah. And we're asking for memorabilia to donate for memorabilia. Mm -hmm. Pete Wave, and I know you have a million, a lot of millions of stuff that you you want to keep, and millions of stuff you like <laughs> to give away. But you know we have a lot of stuff in Pete Wave. Yeah. We want to make sure that everyone in the group is recognized. Mm -hmm. That's important because that's our goal and mission is to educate the public's knowledge in the history of mm -hmm. funk music. Mm -hmm. And so you're sitting here in Dayton, Ohio in the studio with us. And this is this is big to us. Mm -hmm. like that. So what's going on with you now? Are you doing any projects and stuff? Um, I haven't been doing any projects on the professional level, but just a lot of local level stuff. I've just been doing the writing and, and producing on my own, doing some stuff like that. I hear your son, Adrian, yeah. is an amazing musician. There he is. Tell me. He's pretty good. He he kind of studied Michael Jackson and a lot of that stuff yeah, like that, and Usher Jackson, and all this. Yes. Stuff. Oh my gosh, he's he's he 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 can do all that stuff. But he's been he's been singing. He's been doing some production work. He's he's living in uh, he's in Florida now. Right. He relocated from Dayton to Florida, and he's been doing pretty good there. He's he working like with young, different bands. He was like a young James Brown. Oh yeah, he could do it all. He could do it all. He could do it all. He would do Prince. He would do Jackie Wilson. Yes, yes. He would do Michael Jackson. He would just do everything. He would just do it all. A couple of more questions, and I'll turn it back over to G. Mm -hmm. Now, again, like Mario Man, 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 am I saying that right? Manteze. Mario, yes, thank Mario you. Mario Manteze. And, and, and some of the rest of the guys, do you, I know, uh, do you still kind of communicate with them? Or, uh, I know you talked to Roy. And, yeah. And, Bill Bow was one of my, I'm a drummer too. Mm -hmm. Bill Bow, how how's the rest of these guys are doing now? Well, I talk I talk most of the guys for us. I talk to Bill Bow. Bill Bow's probably one I talk to a lot because we kind of keep in communication. You know? mm -hmm. And uh, Bill Bow's doing all right. He's been doing a lot of writing, and he's he's been doing a, some some good things. He's 
he hasn't been in the best of health, right. but he's doing good. He's doing good. Roy, he's been busy doing a lot of things too. He's, um, he's, he's over in England. He's still there. And another guy I talk to a lot is uh, Derek Bramble. I don't know if you remember him. He's he's base player. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. He's in L.A. and he's been doing a lot of good things too. Now what about your key for his Dukes? Oh, I haven't heard from Duke in years, and nobody can find him. But if anybody know what Calvin Duke is, let us know because we've been trying to catch up with him. You heard it first. You heard yeah, it first. You, heard you, heard you heard it first. first. We've been looking for Duke. Might, Where are you, Duke? You about, Duke, if you're watching this, you're about to be found. Yeah, you know, our please. Reach is wide. Our we've been watching. We've been looking for him. He kind of just we never heard from him. Wow. Yeah. It's, 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 it's amazing stuff like that. I'm gonna turn it back over to, to George. Okay. And right there. Yeah, well, yeah, we've got, because of time, you know, so. we could do this all day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, coffee, tea, mm -hmm. whatever your choice of libation is. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure that, you know, I forgot to turn my timer on, so you know, we, <laughs> That's I, okay. I know yeah, we, we, we're approaching. Uh, you can edit. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll edit it out. I, but I'm not going to get rid of anything. Fortunately for us mm -hmm. and DATV, they, they give us an, a leeway. So sometimes when we go over, because our spot is only supposed to be 30 minutes. Okay. But, you know, this is... This is once in a lifetime. I mean, oh, and, you know, it. when we stop search, it. well, again, <laughs> when, we, when I did my research, I couldn't find anything on you. Yeah. You don't do interviews. Is no. this a first? Yeah, it's first. See? I don't do yeah. any interviews. You know, we, and it's so funny. Kinda, Michael Hampton was the same way. I mean, we lucked up and he doesn't do interviews and we got Mike on the show. Hmm. So uh, we, we'll call this part one. There'll be a part two. <laughs> It'll be a lot more free form. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll even get you to bring your accent because you let it slip because you oh are still gosh. playing. I, you, yes, there, you talk yeah. about you get the old, old the rust off. Get yeah. the rust off. Can't wait to hear you play. <laughs> but lastly, uh -huh. give me your fondest memory surrounding your personal best funk experience. So depending on your answer, you know, we'll see where it goes from here or we'll just say, see you later. I think some of the... I think some of the some of the, some of my fondest memories was when we do live shows, because there's one thing of doing music in the studio and doing on records and seeing people listening to it and enjoying it on the radio, but it's it's another thing when you get out there and play live, and you get that response back from every yeah, song. Yeah, you feel the love and everything, yes, and that's when you get your oh. And Lord like, knows oh. we love us some heat wave. Here. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. that's know, that's that's like the biggest five. fulfillment. The heat wave is in my top five groups of all time. Oh, now well, thank you, you know, and we're talking you know. Uh, hundreds, but yeah, heat wave music has always been, and not mm -hmm. just because of the Dayton thing, but because there was so much talent in that group, yeah. that it came through. So you know, I like the the live versions uh, as much as I do some of the studio mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the live versions, like you said, is when you get the feedback from the mm -hmm. crowd, and now you're amped up as yeah, a musician, yeah, we're getting amped up. You know? yeah. Because our shows was uh, it was we like David was talking about yeah. how all the choreography we used to do man and then boom when it's time to sing we hit the mic yes, and it just it was on just, point oh yeah it was it was 100 percent of the time mm -hmm. well, we did a lot of rehearsing yeah a lot of don't, rehearsals you don't <laughs> you don't get what you got without having rehearsal mm -hmm. oh yeah you we, don't just come together and create oh no 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 we, the, we rehearse I mean, you, you're timeless you know we're going to be talking 200 years from now mm -hmm. you're going to be in reverence like you know beethoven and mozart yeah. i mean come on always mm -hmm. and forever mm -hmm. it's a forever kind of song yeah you know mind blowing always kind of forever song there's yeah, plenty yeah. of songs in you guys' library mm -hmm. that's going to still be being played in 200 right. years from now mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you, another Dayton Jim, another <laughs> modest man. But oh. until next time, as Ryan says, keep it funky. Keep it funky. Keep it funky. All right. It's all right. <laughs>